Hey guys, Mr. Rast here. I'm going to give you another quick lesson. This one will be quicker than the last one about the atomic structure. So this is topic four, lesson two about the atomic I structure. I love vocabulary. <laughs> All right. We're going to go over um, basically four terms, four concepts that I want you to understand uh, by the end of this lesson. Uh, and I'll go into greater detail, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the four, four terms right now. So we're going to talk about atomic number. Uh, this is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. So you could really interchange atomic number with the amount of protons an element has. Uh, the next concept we're going to be going over real in this lesson is atomic mass. This is the weight of an atom calculated by the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So the protons and the neutrons together make up the atomic mass. The third concept I need you guys to be comfortable with is isotopes. Isotopes are um, any atoms that have the same number of protons, which would make them the same element, but they have a different amount of neutrons. If they have a different amount of neutrons, but they're the same element, it's an isotope. And the final concept we will um, discuss is the average atomic mass. This is the weighted average of the masses of all naturally occurring isotopes of an element. And I'll explain this in greater detail, but if you're taking notes right now, I would highly suggest that you underline the word weighted, and I'll explain why I would underline that in a moment. So it's the weighted average of all naturally occurring isotopes. Huh? Okay, so the first concept was atomic number. And if you have a periodic table nearby, um, you've, you should uh, take a look at it right now. And the kind of the main number that you see, if you look at a periodic table, it, it goes in order. One, two, three, four, five. It uses um, whole number integers to number in, in sequence from left to right on your periodic table. The atom, that Those numbers are the atomic number. So... Um, if you look at chlorine on your periodic table, it's got a number 17 uh, um, by it. Different periodic tables can take the liberty to do it however they want. Sometimes it's below, sometimes it's above, sometimes it's a red, sometimes it's a bold. But it's usually the number that you catch first. It's that, it's that number that's very easily uh, to recognize. So chlorine is element number 17. It has an atomic number of 17. So that means that there are 17 protons in chlorine. It's, so the number of protons makes it the element. 17 protons makes it chlorine. Go for it. So if you take a look at your periodic table, scan around on there, can you find carbon? My question to you is how many protons are in carbon? So once you find carbon, take a look at that. And carbon is a C, a capital C is its symbol. And when you take a look at uh, C, you'll find that it's got the number six, so since it's got a number six there, that means that carbon has six protons. The atomic number is six, therefore carbon has six protons. It's that simple, guys. All right. Now, atomic mass, what I, um, we, we talked about at the very beginning of this video was the atomic mass is the protons plus the neutrons. The atomic mass of an atom is the protons plus the neutrons. So if I have chlorine 35, that would mean that there are 35 protons and neutrons in chlorine. In this atom of chlorine, I should say, um, has 35 protons and neutrons. So how many neutrons would chlorine 35 have? Think about that. How many neutrons would chlorine 35 have? Well, we know that chlorine always has 17 protons because the protons determines the element. So it goes without saying, Chlorine has 17 protons. Do you need to memorize that? No. You use your periodic table. Your periodic table is a tool to help you um, um, in chemistry. It's like your calculator. It's, it's just a tool. So you look on your periodic table. You see chlorine's got 17. And the atomic mass, if I sell you chlorine 35, that means the atomic mass is 35. Um, you would just take that 35, subtract 17 from it, and that would tell you the neutrons. 
because 35 is protons and neutrons, 17 is just the protons, that's the atomic number, and you subtract those and then you get the number of neutrons. It's important to note that the number of neutrons does not necessarily match the number of protons. In the last lesson, uh, lesson 4.1, um, um, we talked about that the protons and, and electrons always match in atoms. Atoms always have the same amount of protons and electrons um, because they don't have a charge. If it did have an imbalance of protons and electrons, it would have a charge and it would be called an ion, not an element or, um, so, or an atom. So elements and atoms do not have charges. Got it? So, and the neutrons do not have to match the protons and electrons. The next concept was isotopes. Um, this is an example of isotopes. I have chlorine 35 here, and I've got chlorine 37 here. Both of them have 17 protons and also would be 17 electrons, um, but they have different atomic masses. So since they have the same amount of protons and they have different atomic masses, that would mean they have a different amount of neutrons. That's really the difference in these two chlorines. So chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. We've already determined that chlorine 35 would have 18 neutrons because it would be 35 would be the total mass minus the 17 protons of chlorine, which would give you 18 neutrons. So chlorine 37 would have 17, or I'm sorry, 37 minus 17, which would be 20 neutrons. So chlorine 37 has 20 neutrons. Chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 are isotopes because they have a different amount of neutrons, but they are of the same um, element. They're both chlorine and they have a different amount of neutrons, so they're isotopes. Now, Isotopes naturally occur when you get a sand, when chlorine is formed, you'll get chlorine 35 and you'll get chlorine 37 naturally. If, and I'm going to build into that fourth concept right now, the, the, the uh, average atomic mass, if we had chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 in equal proportions, the average of the two would be 36. So if we had 35 and 37 equally proportioned, the average of chlorine would be 36, although there'd be some 35s and th some 37s. But remember I told you to underline the, word, underline the word weighted because there is not a 50-50 ratio when chlorine forms of chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. In fact, there's a lot more chlorine 35 than there is of chlorine 37. So therefore, um, if you have a lot more 35 than you have 37, a weighted average, it would not be 36 the middle, but it would be leaning more towards the chlorine 35 because there's more 35s there. And that is what leads us to the next number that you're going to be reading on your periodic tables. This is the average atomic mass. So chlorine, which again, 17 protons, has an average atomic mass of 35.45 because there is more 35s than the 37s. So what you need to take from this is that this number here is not a specific um, atom of chlorine, it's the average. So if you take a sample of chlorine, the average would be here. And why is it an average? Why, is not, why isn't it just a, a solid whole integer? It's because it's an average um, weighted mass. It's, it's a weighted calculation here, okay? Huh? All right. So with that, I just uh, going to do a little bit of practice with you guys here. And um, what you're going to do is just answer some questions here. So number one, how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in the following? So phosphorus 32 would mean you have phosphorus with 32 as its atomic mass. And what we just went over was if for your atomic mass, you need to subtract the amount of protons minus the um, um, from the atomic mass. So let me see if I can uh, find a periodic table here. Hold on one second. All right, I'm back. I found my periodic table. Da -da. All right, so here. Da -da, periodic table. You should have one too in front of you. So let's practice um, just the first one here. It says, how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in the following? So let's take a look here. Phosphorus 32. Um, 
to figure this out, we need to look at the periodic table and we need to find phosphorus, which is number 15. So I find phosphorus on the periodic table and um, like, like I was saying before, um, uh, phosphorus, oy, phosphorus 32 in symbol, to make it as a symbol, I would write the number um, p capital P and I would put a superscript to the left. So superscript to the left and a capital P means phosphorus 32 in symbols. And since it was element 15, then that would mean that there are 15 protons. The symbol for protons is a lowercase p, and we use cursive for lowercase letters so we don't confuse them with capital. So if I print a p, that's a capital P, which represents, um, a printed p represents capital, and a lowercase p is represented in a cursive, so you can kind of tell the two. Otherwise, it's very difficult if someone writes a large or small p, and you don't really know which one they mean. And then with we, the symbol for protons, there'll be a plus with that too. So to answer the question, how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in the following? Well, okay, protons for phosphorus 32 is 15, and we figured that out from the periodic table. The neutrons would be a small little calculation. We would take 32, which is the protons plus the neutrons, protons plus the neutrons, which is a lowercase m, and then we would subtract those 15 protons and so when we subtract that, we would get a 7, and we'd get a 1, and so we could say that there are 17 neutrons. All right, and then finally, how many electrons are there? Well, the electrons in all atoms will always match the number of protons, so there is also 15 electrons. Why? Because atoms don't have a charge. They have the same amount of protons as they do electrons. So that's how you would do the first one here. Uh, how many protons are in phosphorus 32. Now, like I showed you just now, phosphorus 32 in symbols is a capital P with a superscript to the left, 32. So superscript 14 with a C, that would mean carbon 14. And the reason I have it written like this, um, so the second one, let's see here. Where are we at here? There we go. So the second one is the same thing as in words, we would write it like this, carbon 14 is the same as this over here. So um, so we would take take the look up on the periodic table, how many protons carbon has, subtract that from, and that would be your protons, subtract that from 14, that would be your neutrons, and your protons and the neutrons are equal for, for that. So um, give that a shot, and hopefully you can figure out number two if it's basically the reverse of number one. And we will go over all those answers in class. If you have any questions, comments, and concerns, please don't be afraid to ask. That's what I'm here for.